It's mid-March 2020 and uh, man it's a nice day today. I thought I'd uh, do a quick update on the greenhouse. This is Springville, Utah and just to orient you uh, mountains, Wasatch Mountains. I've got a railroad that runs just to our east and this is just horse pasture over here. Um, Utah Lake in the distance that way. This is a geothermal greenhouse. I've gone into more detail and past updates. So this update, I'm just gonna update a couple of new items here at the greenhouse. First of which is this weather station. I got this at myaccurite.com. This is, uh, it's a five in one weather station. I think I paid about 250 bucks. I got it, it was a Christmas special. This is the outside weather station and it measures temperature, obviously. Uh, wind direction, wind speed, humidity, moisture. And what this thing does is it communicates with the main device on the inside. So that's the main device there and the sensors all communicate with that guy and that guy connects to the internet right here. There's no internet out here so I bought a mobile hotspot from T-Mobile so that I have internet out here and uh, I paid about 70 bucks for that. I think it's ten dollars a month to have internet here but that gives me a lot of options out here at the greenhouse since this greenhouse is about a half hour from my house and it's nice to know how it's doing when I'm not here so I can monitor it really from anywhere just by getting on my phone or computer and it'll tell me how everything's doing. Uh, other sensors that it communicates with this guy right here is another sensor and then I've got three other sensors just in different spots in the greenhouse there's another sensor I've got another one down on the east end there and these sensors communicate with that main device and uh, I can get on my phone or computer from anywhere and see how everything's going out here. So that was myaccurite.com. I really uh, think it's a useful tool if your greenhouse isn't right at your home. The other update I'll give you, I talked about the water that we've had here. Uh, when we put the geothermal pipes in, we hit water in a couple different spots, about seven to 10 feet down. One of the places we hit water was on the east end of this greenhouse when we did this dig out here. This greenhouse sits uh, four feet below grade and then we backfilled to get it five and a half to six feet below grade. But the east end has water, everything past that hydrant. But then once you hit that hydrant and move west, the water's completely gone. So uh, it's been a little bit of a concern. We've been monitoring the water. We put a big hole in the ground right there, dug it deep so we could watch the water level. And it actually came up to um, the top of that bucket. Um, so what we did was, uh, this bucket has holes in it. We, um, we cut the bottom out of this bucket. And then we ran, uh, we ran this little gravel and rock channel. I call it my lazy stream. We ran it all the way through the greenhouse and this uh, walkway that leads out of the greenhouse is all rock and gravel. And this walkway leads all the way, or this gravel channel, leads all the way over to where our pipes are. You can see that pipe, that cover right there sits on the external pipes that run 230 feet around this building. So we can now get that water out of here when we need to, and ever since we put that in, the water has not risen above the bottom of that bucket where the channel starts. So that's kind of a unique feature in the greenhouse. Um, over here we're going to plant a cogshell mango tree here, and because we hit water down here, uh, I've built this little, heck, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, place to uh, plant that cogshell mango above about a foot above where I normally would and that allows me to stay above the water in the winter when the water is high here. So um, other than that, the aquaponics is not completed but it's still moving along. That's the tank. You can see the viewing window that'll go um, right there in the center. 
Uh, this uh, tank is about 1,300 gallons and it'll overflow into this hard waste container here. And this guy will actually have a pipe coming out of the bottom of it that we can uh, pipe into a hose bib and fill up a bucket and put uh, the solid waste from the fish onto the plants and trees in the greenhouse. And then this, it's a filter. This filter will overflow back into a pipe above these four grow beds. And uh, we'll use the fish water in the grow beds with grow media. These are bell siphons. If you've looked at aquaponics online, you've definitely seen these bell siphons online. And this is how the water will fill up and drain from these grow beds and um, probably fill up and drain every 30 to 45 minutes. We'll, we'll know when we start running it. These grow beds are piped and plumb and empty over into this sump. And again, these are totes that I've used over here. Uh, they all drain into the sump, which needs to be cleaned. Uh, there's a pump right there that uh, will pump the water up and over into a future small little waterfall over there in the corner that we'll build, which will then put the water back into the fish tank. So it's a constant flow that'll flow through here. Uh, we can clean the solid waste from the filter and put that on plants and trees. If we need to do a big clean out of the sump here, we've got the ability to uh, just turn the valve on. It's on right now, but uh, so that's, uh, We've stopped doing that while we've begun planting in here. Once we knew we could manage the water uh, that was coming up in the winter, we decided let's get going on planting. So really quickly, this is a mango variety right here. I think it's a diamond. And as you can see, it's done really well. We've had it for probably nine months and it's been growing well. Um, the citrus, this is uh, another citrus. This is a Washington navel. That citrus variety is actually a mandarin. And this is another mango. Again, it's doing well. This was a smaller mango that we brought in, but it's growing well. It's a lime tree. The pomegranate is doing great. This has been in the ground since last fall. This is a little yerba mate tree. And a fig tree that's uh, been in since the fall. And again, that's doing great. We uh, put these avocado trees in actually fairly recently. They were potted all winter long and uh, seem to have done well through the winter. We recently just put these uh, bananas in the ground. In the back, we've got dragon fruit and uh, you can see the new growth on the dragon fruit here. This guy I thought was dead ever since it arrived. They did not ship real well, but you can see some new growth on this one here. Passion fruit here, which we've put back in this back row bed and put this hog panel here to see if it'll trellis up since it's kind of a viney um, tree. Uh, more dragon fruit over here. You can see this dragon fruit is doing really well. Um, it's got plenty of new growth and healthy growth. Um, we put some tomatoes planted some onions, some broccoli, some peppers, and they're doing great. And here's some more citrus. The citrus trees we get from Four Winds Growers out of California. We've got nine different varieties in here. Um, mangoes come from Top Tropicals in Florida. Um, Top Tropicals and So Exotic and Fast Growing Trees are a couple of other sources we've used to, to buy some of the different things in here. But that's a quick update. Winter went really well here. We were able to maintain mid 40s and up. And um, fans kick on at about 85 to start cooling it. And uh, so far so good. I'm sure we'll have some failures, but uh, man, it's, uh, it's been really a nice place to escape to with everything going in the world. And uh, of course winter, uh, it's been nice to come in here and have a little tropical oasis. But that's the update for now.